God's covenant of friendship in the times of the Moshiach in the awesome, fearful day of the Lord. The times of the Moshiach. Well, they've already begun much different than the rabbis teach of the Messianic era when Moshiach comes. I mean, his coming is the beginning, supposedly, of the Messianic era. I would tell you it actually began in 1948 when Israel was created. That's when God knew he was going to uh, need a representation, a man who could speak and write his words as he had Moses, because that was the beginning of the day of the Lord. And this is how we know that God grants his covenant of friendship that you find in Ezekiel 34, beginning at verse 23. And this is what he says he's going to do when Moshiach comes. This is straight from God. This is not from uh, a psalm or chapter 11. That even, even uh, Rambam said, you know, look, we're looking at a bunch of metaphors. It's a time of peace. Okay, but look at the end of chapter 11. When Israel goes uh, to war against neighboring countries. Well, that doesn't look like a time of peace. Every verse before the, uh, I don't know, a wolf shall lie with a lamb and this and that, all those. You know, they're just leaving out what they don't want to see. It's cherry picking. But here's what God says that's going to happen when Moshe, the twig of the shoot that rose from the stump of Jesse, the descendant of David through Solomon, and that's important to recognize because God made a covenant of eternal kingship with not only David, but with Solomon too, as he said on the throne. So uh, David had more children than Solomon. Okay, but this twig and the shoot does not come, well, of course it doesn't come from the line of the kings of Judah. Uh, that's why it's a stump. Uh, the ancestral tree of the kings of Judah, uh, the line of Jesus, was cut down. It was banished, never to rule again. So, um, Moshiach is as much a descendant of Solomon as he is descendant of David, or, and as much a descendant of Jesse. But God calls... God calls uh, the descendant of David, simply David, my servant David, a shepherd. That's how he refers to him, not King Moshiach, as Rambam does, and as uh, those who teach the Messianic era believe. Verse 23, Then I will appoint a single shepherd over them to tend them. My servant David, he shall tend them. He shall be a shepherd to them. This is after all the rabbis are dismissed. And what's being said, what's being said and what God tells me is, is likened to uh, rabbis being teachers. Everything you're seeing in, in the books that he had me write and these videos of those books are new teachings. They're new teachings that everybody needs to hear. And in particular, they are the proofs that God is here, along with the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit, and the man. And to understand this day, how he communicates with the world, and did throughout the Hebrew Bible. To open up, that's, that's one of the things they say, is that the Torah, there'll be new knowledge of Torah. Well, it's new knowledge of the Bible, and that includes the Torah. All these proofs. All these proofs God is offering and astounded that there's never even a comment from a Jewish person. But that's what Isaiah 63 says. Who is this coming from Gentile country? It is I, says the Lord. And the peoples that are with him, the peoples he tramples by the way, the utter destruction is there again if they don't heed his prophet. And listen to him. He said, I was astounded. So 
So here's what he says in his covenant of friendship. Now this picks up with verse 24. The Lord will be their God, and my servant David shall be a ruler among them. Not a ruler over them. Not a king over them. There is reference to king and prince and shepherd. Okay, that means leader in this context. And, you know, I am a leader as a prophet of God. There is no telling what all he's going to have me do that it takes to do what? Build, have built his third temple. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will grant them a covenant of friendship. This is what occurs and has started occurring since Israel was created. The Jews return. Moshiach is born in 1957, the year the Russians sent up the first satellite, the dawning of the era of the Internet, which is clearly necessary with a planet with this many people. This many Jewish people dispersed throughout the world. But it's written in antiquity. It's written so that they can understand it first. I will banish vicious beasts from their land, and they shall live secure in the wasteland. They shall even sleep in the woodland. I will make these and the environs of my hill a blessing. I will send down the rain in its season, rains that bring blessing. The trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and the land shall yield its produce. My people shall continue secure on its soil. They shall know that I am the Lord when I break the bars of their yoke and rescue them from those who enslave them. Today, that would just be Christianity, religion against religion. Two billion to, uh, I don't know how many Jews are in the world, seven million in Israel, give or take. They shall no longer be a spoil to the nations, and the beasts of the earth shall not devour them. They shall dwell, dwell secure and untroubled. A time of peace in Israel. It doesn't have to be peace in all the world. How is God going to bring peace in all the world when he is going to have his vindication in his day against the Gentiles who treated the Jews so terribly? They shall know that I, the Lord, their God, am with them, and they are my people, declares the Lord God. For you, my flock, flock that I tend, are men, and I am your God, declares the Lord God. And God says, in Ezekiel 37, my servant David shall be king over them. There shall be one shepherd for all of them. They shall follow my rules and faithfully obey my laws. Thus they shall remain in the land which I gave to my servant Jacob, and in which your fathers dwelt. They and their children's children's children shall dwell there forever, with my servant David as their prince for all time. That would be his line. I will make a covenant of friendship with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will establish them and multiply them. And I will place my sanctuary among them forever. He knows in the time of Ezekiel that in the day of the Lord there will be no temple. I will place my sanctuary. A planning of renown. And this all goes hand in hand with Jeremiah chapter 31, 28 and onward. The land blooms again is how I phrase it. It's in the it's in it's in the covenants of friendship and it's in the sea of time is coming. My presence shall rest over them, and when my sanctuary abides among them forever, the nation shall know that I the Lord do sanctify Israel. 
That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's not messianic air. It's not messianic air, but that's not bad. We we have a man like Moses amongst us. God speaks to his people again. And we and there's no telling, you know, it says in chapter 11, uh, and even to an ex well, anyway, in chapter 11, that uh, that uh, he will counsel kings of other nations. Remember, he can speak to me. I mean, you know it by the words. It sounds just like me. You don't know it as, as I do. That's for certain. Um, and I'm talking to those who believe based on these proofs. Now, I'm not saying it has to sink in. Listen, I was in the fire refinement for two years, early on in this 13 years. And uh, I can remember distinctly, about two years into it, I, I just looked up where he was, had me face to face, but up in the sky. And I said, you know, I still can't believe you exist. I said, I know you do. I know you're God. <laughs> believe me, I know. <clears throat> because of those things he was doing with me to break me of my bitterness and furious spirit with what he was doing with me. But it just wouldn't sink in. But you know, you got you got to become intellectual. He always says that Jewish, Jewish people are very intellectual about these things, particularly in, in the study of Talmud and this and that and the way they question things and step outside the box. Well, I'm sure not saying it. I mean, that, I, I, I've heard that said too. The... But where is it? I mean, is it possible? Two books later, on uh, WordPress for five years, uh, uh, 42 to 3 videos on the books themselves, which are unpublished, and not a single comment. Not one. Now, I know why the rabbis who see it, and they certainly must. I mean, I've got, I'm getting close to a thousand views. Which isn't much, it's, you know, it's not like I have a synagogue and everybody at the synagogue knows me or a radio show or Jews for Judaism, a well-known organization. I don't know how their videos started out, but it's clear that they, they put anything on there and, um, you know, there's thousands of people going to look at it immediately. <clears throat> and, you know, that's great. But... I can't imagine that there aren't people who have seen this that are Jewish people that, if nothing else, have listened to them before. Because almost every one of my titles has got Isaiah 53 in it, and both of those organizations are known for saying it's the Jewish people. I've been in Jewish groups, particularly groups where Christians are either converting or want to be Noahides um, and, 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 or have converted. Um, and I could, you know, I couldn't mention any of this. If I so much as mentioned that uh, the purpose of Isaiah 53 is the same purpose as Elijah, boom, attacked viciously by the members of the group and eventually told them that. I didn't bother telling them that he's a Gentile, much less say it's me. I didn't do anything like that. And of course it is me. But... You know, it's how God presented it. It's not up to me. That's just what happened. Then God says, Thus said the Lord God. This is 37. I am going to take the Israelite people from among the nations they have gone to and gather them from every quarter and bring them to their own land. That will never be all the people. I will make them a single nation in the land, on the hills of Israel, and one king shall be king of them all. Okay, this is written for antiquity. What do we know? Moshe acts here. Israel is a democratic country with a prime minister, a Knesset. Basically what we would think of as a Congress and a House and, uh, or a Congress and a Senate. Uh, in America. Never again will they be two nations. That's what it's really about. And they're not. And despite Ezekiel's vision that every tribe will go back to its supported uh, original lands, that's not going to happen either. It can't happen. Maybe you could have thought it 2,000 years ago, even the time of the Talmud. But 
you know, the she's been too much into marrying. There's no pure Levite. There's no, you know, pure Judean. There's no pure Benjamite. They're, they're all gone. They're all gone. And never again shall they be divided into two kingdoms. Now, there's a little problem with that because you can start saying, well, well, there isn't other peoples in there. They, 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 you know, they haven't even made a state for themselves, but they want to inside the promised land. So that's something that's going to have to be addressed one day. <clears throat> Nor shall they ever again defile themselves by their fetishes and their abhorrent beings and by their other transgressions. Torah written on your heart. God is back. God is here. Son, the Father will say. It's real. Don't turn your back on the Hebrew Bible. Look, it's real. Look at what everybody is saying of this man. I have to be lifted high for this to work, folks. Those witnesses who believe, tell everybody you see, who can believe our report. Read these books and watch these videos and tell me it's not him. And keep in mind, he was an atheist for 50 years. He said no training in religion whatsoever. Everything he knows comes straight from God. It's the only answer. There is no other answer. As hard as it is to sink in. I will save them in their settlements where they sinned, and I will cleanse them. What does he do in the day of the Lord? Once he has his Moshiach, his, his representation prepared, what does he do? He announces that the new covenant is here and that all Jews are forgiven of their sins and inequities. He remembers them no more across the face of the earth. Unlike Christianity, that doesn't mean you're going into the scroll of remembrance. You could be dismissed. You could be those who do not heed him that he points out, do not esteem and revere his name in Malachi. And he knew when he made the new covenant that it says, all will heed me. Well, again, that's how you write that kind of covenant. I'm going to forgive your sins. I expect everybody to respect me, heed me, revere and esteem my name. But God knows better than that. He knew when Moses announced the first covenant where all Israelites had to agree to it and abide by it, he knew Moses wasn't going to get finished talking and there wasn't going to be sin happening in that crowd of over a million people. Okay? <laughs> I mean, it's just common sense that God knew that. He knows everything. That he started a relationship with the chosen people, the beginning of his script for his reality show. The greatest reality show of all time. That has to be the Holy Spirit. That's how he does. Okay, moving on, Holy Spirit person. Then they shall be my people, and I will be their God. Again, it sounds like he stopped. But he never has. He is he espoused the Jewish people. But you can almost say when you leave the land, if you go off into Europe, bad things are going to happen. Bad things are going to happen. And I gave this analogy before the crusty old rancher in Texas. And he has built up this ranch and he's, maybe he's got a couple old, old rigs on it. And it's, it's, it's florist, it's beautiful. And he's getting old and he wants his son to take over. And expects him to, expects him to live on that land all of his life. And he looks up and there's his son in a dapper suit, suitcase. He says, Dad, I'm going to the city. I'm going to live there the rest of my life. Huh. Now, I know this isn't a Roman dispersal. This isn't a destruction of the land. That part of the analogy doesn't work. But this part as to God does. Well, you just go ahead and go. But while you're gone, don't you call me and ask for help. I'll just wait for you right here. You will be back. Okay, now that's God, folks. I think y'all forgotten his ways. You know, he's taken a lot of effort to put all this together. He's been with me for he's been, been with me for 63 years. And um, 
But he is having a good time. We 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 laugh all the time. Ten percent of the time, the other ten percent is usually. Uh, well, let's just say I'm still in the final refinement. So anyway, David comes in the day of the Lord. A time to come announced in Jeremiah 30 land, when the land blooms again, the ruined cities are rebuilt, and the Jewish people will never be uprooted and overthrown again, overthrown again. He's not writing for the exiles. They couldn't, the northern kingdom was inhabited by Gentiles. They, it, it, it doesn't apply on many levels. Moshiach didn't come. Uh, as you would find, the branch is supposed to come and build the second temple. But he didn't. He didn't. And that's uh, Zechariah, but, or Ezra. In any event, it's for the Roman dispersal. God knew what Rome was going to do. And he wanted, he wanted his people to be dispersed throughout the world. But not necessarily all of them, you know, come back and keep the land going. But, uh, uh, and, and that's a, another uh, phrase the Christians use all the time. He'll, they'll, they'll be, or Jesus will build, I don't know how it comes about, a house of prayer for all peoples. And God does say that. God says that. It's uh, Isaiah chapter 61, I believe. But read it. Read it. It says, if they hold fast to my covenant that I made with my people. If they're observant Jews is what he's saying. If they ever want to see the house of prayer of God, if they ever want to enter a temple, they better be Jewish. No Christians in. Period. And that's true for the heaven he's creating also. You know, they spent all these thousands of years and are still trying today to convert Jews to Christianity under the uh, strictly made-up belief. There's nothing to back it up. That if the Jews will believe in Jesus, he'll come back. No, he said when he's coming back, he's a false prophet, false god, false idol. He's not coming back. He doesn't exist and he never did. Period. Thus says the Lord. And I can quote him just like any other prophet could. I am the true righteous servant of God. A prophet of God. A man in divine beings. There is no Jesus. There never was a Jesus. And God would tell the rabbis, tell all you, stop acting like he existed. The minute you say you believe there was a Jesus, they think you should believe that he was the Son of God. And you should convert to Christianity. Forget your written new covenant of sin forgiveness in the day of the Lord. Forget that. You won't be sin free. Believe you on Jesus. Adopt a false God. Worship a false God. Leave the God of Israel is what they tell you. Well, he's bringing it right back to them, isn't he? And that's why, that's why Isaiah 53, the man describes a Gentile coming from Gentile lands. A dominant son. And not only that, he's also Elijah. Elijah is a Gentile, an inhabitant of Ramoth Gilead. A Tishbite. There's no Tishbites in any of the tribes that I can find. East of the River Jordan, north of Adam. And he's taken up by the chariots of God, the only man specifically taken to heaven by God. And he crossed over the Jordan into Gentile territory. It may have been Adam, it may have been uh, Gilead. I would, I would suggest it was Gilead. He was down by Jericho some of the time. Um, and that's where God takes him up and he returns. That's what a Gentile. From Adam and a son. So there's two different ways of saying that. And Jesus is a Jew. Can't be Isaiah 50. He doesn't fit the verses anyway. He wasn't played, smitten, accounted, uh, afflicted by God. He wasn't, uh, uh, he was never sick. He wasn't diseased. He wasn't exposed to death. He died. He didn't have children. He didn't make them any righteous by his knowledge. 
one of the gospels says he uh, one of the books says could be hebrews he died hating the law of moses well that's god's law hating it that's in their book don't tell me he went around making jews observant following uh the laws of the God of Israel, the teachings he gave to Moses to give to all of Israel. Don't tell me he was out making people righteous with that. Now, he had some good sayings, but he, you know, uh, rich men have a hard time getting into heaven. Well, rich men are usually pretty corrupt, but not always. Um, yeah, I don't even know if that's true. But anyway, I was still going to say it. Um, but he, he got, all, he, he, of course, got that from the Torah. And supposedly he's familiar with Isaiah. And you can't tell me he didn't know he didn't fit it. That's what, that's what happens on the cross. He's delusional even in the stories. Because he didn't exist. The, the minute you recognize him, Christians feel that that's, that's all they need to, have, to, to get you to convert. You're just missing a part. The part where he's a human sacrifice. If you believe he existed, he's just a story. Read, read, uh, read my book, uh, the Essenes embody Jesus Christ. Find out about their gate. Find out about their prolific writing, <clears throat> uh, writings that did see scrolls. These copyists, these commentators on the scripture, as in Midrash. I can't remember. The, they have a different name for it. And their founder is the teacher of righteousness. They were great followers of the book of Isaiah. They had what is called the great scroll of Isaiah. I believe that means all of Isaiah, all 70, almost 70 chapters, uh, is in one scroll or something of that man. But their founder believes he's the man of Isaiah 53. So here they are, 100 years later from the founding, there are about to be a scene. So there's, there's three three sects at the time, Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes. For some reason, Essenes are never mentioned. And yet they are. They, they Just like Jesus, I, th I believe it's where the story starts. But the main thing is they never wrote anything about him. There's not one word this mythical Jesus into the temples destroyed 40 years after his death. What's happening? There's been the revolt. Jews are fleeing the country. It would include rabbis. People knowledgeable in the scripture, they got no money. You know, so. My memory card only goes to half an hour. Shlomo turns to Epstein. He says, Epstein, what am I going to do? I mean, all my money is sitting there. I got eight kids. My wife's bothering me. I got, what are we going to do? And he says, how about that story about Jesus, that Jesus character, that, you know, I know, mythical character. What about him? All that stuff, man, God, you know, Caesar, you know, everybody believed he was God. I don't. Would that be a false God? And, of course, in Egypt, remember the teachings that came with the, uh, those in the Exodus? So, uh, they, and, 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 and uh, Shlomo says, it's saying, Please, please, you can't attach anything of the Moshiach, the anointed one, to the story of Jesus. Are you kidding me? This thing says, Slomo. Nobody, the Gentiles can't read. They can't go check anything. You saying that me and you together can't put together some books on that story? And just throw in whatever we need to to make it sound like prophecy is satisfied in this guy? Who's going to check? That's how it started. It's the only explanation. How could they, how could they have not, the Essenes, they got their own gate in Jerusalem. How could they not have heard about Jesus Christ, who is claiming to be their founder, who their founder said to be? They didn't check that out. They didn't check that out. The man walking on water, raising dead people. These are stories that didn't happen. I know, I fell into the same trap. Well, in biblical times, these things could happen. No, they didn't. In biblical times, everybody told stories. Everybody told stories. God told stories. Yeah, you tell you, well, no, wait, this stuff happened on the ground in my story. Some of their stories just come out of thin air. That's the difference. God's stories are based on true facts. So, 
<laughs> That's what happened. Slow on this thing. You know, and he said, well, who's name going to put it in? I said, he said, well, I'll be one of the disciples. I'll be John. I'm going to write a gospel called John. And no, no, Hey, I said, you write the first one, Smart. It's the first one we find 40 years later. They had to know, it had to be somebody very familiar with the Hebrew Bible, and I don't, I, I don't believe that was just a Gentile. And Jesus is a Jew. I mean, the whole thing started out as a Jewish sect, Christianity. But then Paul came along, Paul changed it. So God's left them, he's gone to the Gentile, because, because Paul was getting shunned by the major groups in Jerusalem. Anyway, so I I haven't read my Paul and stuff for 12, 11 years now, but I can get back, I can get back learning in it real quick if I need to. So anyway, carrying on. That's the two covenants of friendship, and that's what you can expect. You're not going to be defeated again, not dispersed. That means you're protected by God. And he's doing what's necessary to have you protected. And what he tells me is building that temple. After whatever it is that happens, that we get re obtain the temple now again. You know, just think six-day war. And everybody talking about Moshiach, he actually came. God is here. The God of Israel. It's going to keep them from attacking you and defeating you uh, again. They may attack, but they will not win. Now, that could be in God's power. But, you know, he does. I'm not, I'm not, as I say, I'm not on the executive committee here. I am nothing but a lowly servant. To the rabbis, I'm the prophet. That's who I am. I'm the man that God is within in his spirit. That's who I am. But in this room, I'm the lowly servant, I can assure you. I can't say, uh, could you kiss the light for me? Because <laughs> I know his power better. I know his power like the back of my hand. Matter of fact, it's on the back of my hand. Yeah, could you, uh, <laughs> hey, Holy Spirit, uh, tell me a story. <laughs> I'm getting ready for bed. Yeah, one night, one night I said, They've been talking, they've had me a, a sleep deprivation is, is one of the great ways to break a recruit, and they do it with me all the time. Good days without sleep, and you know, and they talk and they talk. It's like I'm Solomon, I got a thousand wives, and uh, they all like to talk. And if I say, yeah, I say, whoa, 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 I gotta get some sleep. I gotta get some, you've got to stop talking. And it's just like a hush fell over the brain. And I hear the Holy Spirit saying to God, Did, did he just tell us to shut up? I said, God, you know I didn't say shut up. I just said, I need to get some sleep because please be quiet. The Spirit, you know, he's in trouble, but he's so far. It made me laugh. I stayed up, I'm sure, another couple of days just on that one. Uh, well, this looks pretty good. So here, here's what the first sea of time is coming that you find in Jeremiah 31. And it goes with God says uh, in Ezekiel, as part of the friendship, I'm going to uh, uh, create a planning of renown. Sea of time is coming, declares the Lord. When I will, and this is from the JPS. Now, I know the renditions that uh, everybody else seems to be using. I find on the internet at Shabbat, at Jewish Virtual Library, the ones I see Toby the Singer using, um, are referring to, and Jews for Judaism. I don't know where that comes from, but they're all very similar. But, Jews, but, but the Jewish Publication Society spent 30 years with great minds, pedigreed linguistics, rabbis, and they started from scratch with the Leningrad Kodak. You need to go to that. It, it all makes more sense. I mean, this sea of time is coming that I refer. That's what they said that means, the Hebrew. Uh, but in these older renditions, you get the Masoretic text, text 
uh, which, as I understand it, began with the Leningrad Codex, but got kept getting changed up. As though they want good translation, let's make it better. Something like that. Uh, well, they still got a long way to go, these Masoretic texts. Um, and, and, you know, Christians need to start from scratch, too. You just throw out the Greek translation, Septuagint, and just, you know, get their people to do what the Jewish Publication Society did. Here's the Living Red Codex, start from scratch. Oh, wait a minute, that's Latin. I digress into an area I know a little of. Thank you, Holy Spirit person. See, I told you it's trouble. He led me down a false truth. They're telling me to say these things. This is not written here. Let me get back to the text. But anyway, see the time is coming is phrased differently. When I will sound the house of Israel and the house of Judah with seed of men and seed of cattle, and just as I was watchful over them to uproot them and pull them down, defeated and dispersed, and that shows up again in the other, uh, the last sea of time is coming on the rebuilding of Jerusalem. To overthrow and to destroy and to bring disaster. So I will be watchful over them to build and to plant, declares the Lord. In those days, I can skip that. Sea of time is coming, declares the Lord. When I will make a new covenant. With the house of Israel and the house of Judah, it will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers. Well, there's an amendment to it. It's not strict compliance. It's not strict compliance. It's being mindful of and all the different uh, sects. I don't know how you refer to it. Of Judaism, ultra-Orthodox, Orthodox, conservative, reform, whoever. Yeah, everybody's going to have to come to that of their own. A normal tradition. What does mindful mean for us? But it is different. And, and the inclusion of sin forgiveness, written sin forgiveness. Uh, again, there's a temple to be built. He did written sin forgiveness with the uh, exiles who returned and built the second temple, a holy seed. So it will not be like the covenant made with their fathers. He doesn't say that ended and I'm making it a new or anything like that. It's just new because of an amendment and all this and I will be their God and they will be my people. It's just a confirmation, an affirmation of the first covenant always being in existence. You know, he says even, even Moses violated it, but I married you anyway. And I think we can safely assume God doesn't divorce. You can't get a get, so to speak, right? Jewish people. What else did I learn the other day? Oi! Oi! That's, that's almost the extent of my Hebrew. I'm working on my apple. With that's Yiddish, I know that. Uh, they're making me get real positive about things. Sometimes they make me feel like this thing will never get off the ground. But that's not true of late. Not since we started videotaping. And uh, they're getting me serious about learning Hebrew again. I will put my teaching in there, most beings, scribe it on their hearts. So anyway, y'all y'all can find that. That's Jeremiah 31, verse 27. Okay, so the day of the Lord, this makes sense. It's, it's to complete and fulfill the remaining prophecies of the Hebrew Bible that are out there, still outstanding, haven't occurred. To deliver two specific covenants uh, and build a third temple, and God will have his vengeance for vindication against the enemies of the Jewish people. His enemies. The Jewish people will never be overthrown, uprooted again, will no longer bear the taunts of nations. The world will know God sanctifies Israel. Now, does that mean everybody in the world is going to do that? No. Does that mean every taunt against the Jews is going to stop? No. You know, it's, it's, uh, is everybody going to heed God because he forgives their sins? No. Yeah, you know, you've got, you got to read these with a little common sense. And we'll rest secure in a time of peace. What is a time of peace? Does that mean you're not in war? Or does it mean your neighbors love you? What is it? Is it utopia? 
Even Isaiah, look, look at 65 or so. You know, I know Judaism says there is no hell, and God God confirms that with me, but I still have my doubts sometimes, because I said, well, why did you have Isaiah write that all flesh will come and worship you, and their seed shall burn forever, and it shall be a horrible look upon, or something like that. He says, that was just for antiquity, Keith, can't you read it right? I said, oh no, I've fallen into the rabbi trap. I'm picking and choosing because I feel like I'm living in it. I'm supposed to be learning about what it's like to live in heaven with God supplying the information of my mind. But I swear, I feel like I'm being dragged to hell for this 13 years. I know it doesn't show now, and I have to admit, I was never this guy that laughs and smiles all the time. Never even close to it. So there's something to God whooping up on you all the time. Are there any happy Jews out there? I think there are. They're great comedians. But not as great as the Holy Spirit person. Which means they can make me into a great comedian. You know, I tell them, well, let's go do it. This is going to fail. Y'all poor mouthing this whole thing. Might prosper, might prosper. Oh, well. You know, God, what? Hey. And, and, uh, I said, well, let's go do something else. Why don't you just write a different kind of book? Why don't we go write a religious book? You can do anything. Let's go to Vegas. Chief, tell me what the other guy's cars are. So, hey, deal. Who's going to get you? He said, he said, well, nobody's going to get me. But I don't do things that are wrong. I said, really? See, I learned he meant that one. Really? You know, you know, you don't call beating on the lower existing creature of the universe <laughs> wrong. He said, "Not the kind of purpose, and that's the way to change." See, that's okay. I said, "That's like me telling the police I was over here when I was at the scene of the crime." I said, "Is it, is it because if I had told them I was at the scene of the crime, I was going to jail?" It's okay. It's a lie, but it's an okay lie. See, that's the way to get off. It didn't really happen, by the way. That's just, some, that, that's a, that's just a, a skit that we put together for me to learn things. There, there, there was, there's analogies to it. It just wasn't a point. <laughs> so anyway, so Ram Bam refers to, I'm going to finish up with this. Ram Bam refers to the anointed one, Moshiach, uh, from the line of David through Solomon, uh, as King Moshe. He's got two chapters on this great book he put together. It does, chapter 11 does not mention a king or a kingdom with regard to Moshe. Moshe is not mentioned again in Isaiah and just once more in Ezekiel 34 and 37. And that's just with the covenants of friendship for the most part. <laughs> He's got two two huge chapters of it. And Moshe shall study Torah. And Moshe shall do mitzvahs. And <laughs> Moshe shall build the temple. Moshe shall do the... And really, King Moshe, and King Moshe will gather his his kingdom to him. Well, you know, that's okay right now in your day. You can still have kingdoms, but uh, you're not going to turn Israel, this democratic state of Israel, into a kingdom today. I don't care if you're Moshe. I don't care if you're a man of divine beings. It's not happening. And God knew that. Believe me, he knew. He knew. He knew when the Russians were going to send up Sputnik. And when he was going to select me in 1957 because it was the dawning of the age of the internet. And he knew Israel would be created in 1948. Now how does he know exact dates like that? Believe me, you learn one thing in the fire refinery. You stop thinking about it. And of course you did. You probably knew the name of Jesus before creation began. He said, well, okay, okay, that's a little bit far. But I knew he's going to have one like him. <laughs> okay, and that's in 34 and 37 of Ezekiel. And God refers to him as my servant David, a shepherd, a king, and a prince, both lowercase letters there. Um, and he is also the speaker of Moshe. 
the speaker of Isaiah 61, although not specifically identified. It's not Isaiah, it's not Jesus. Jesus uses it to declare the day of the Lord, and that's when he, 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 he leaves out the angel of the covenant of sin forgiveness to describe John the Baptist as Elijah, who is clearing the way for him instead of for God to return to his temple. Couldn't say that either because the temple's already there, but he certainly did. The gospel certainly quotes that uh, Malachi verse 1. I, I can't remember what context. I, I don't know. If, uh, but anyway, it's used in, in the New Testament. And, you know, I see these videos, but uh, God makes me watch these things. The mother rabbis and this and that where, and he said, uh, well, John the Baptist, Elijah. Well, and then we go through all these different things. And one gospel says uh, he denied it himself. Well, how about this? He didn't exist either. <laughs> and in any event, when Elijah comes, the Jewish people are never dispersed and defeated again because he comes in the time to come of Jeremiah 31, takes you to Malachi 3, there's Elijah, clearing the way. But, but what happened? Rome defeated three revolts of the Jews and destroyed the temple and dispersed them across the world. They became the diaspora, the dispersal. So he can't, he can't be Elijah. Because if he was Elijah, then there is to be defeated and dispersed again. Period. Simple. Five minute video. I always think the hours are going to be half an hour and they're all running up past. So, uh, oh, what about that? already covered. Thank you very much for listening.